Hey hotties, welcome back to the sleepover where I wear a full face of makeup. I was honestly quite hesitant to film this video today because um, a couple of my friends have told me that like maybe it's not the best idea for me to do another one of these girl talks. This is my literal like fifth installment of like this series. So like they're kind of like, oh, it's like getting a little boring, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like it's been six months. So I have gone through so many changes since my last girl talk. And I just love talking to you guys and just like connecting in a different kind of way. So here it is episode five bitches <laughs> so i asked you to ask me questions on instagram and i wrote them down all in here and the first question is would you recommend going on tinder i'm desperate but i know you met your boyfriend on there you are correct <laughs> i did meet my boyfriend on tinder definitely not the story i wanted to tell my parents i actually lied to them um the first time i told them that i just met him at his work like because he works at a retail store so i just told them that we met there and they saw right through me because they're like girl what the fuck like there's no way a guy would just be like hey you're cute <laughs> like give me your number so then i was like yeah i kind of met him on tinder and they were like okay don't do that again and i'm like i don't plan to <laughs> especially now i feel like tinder is very saturated with bad people i feel like it's not the best idea to download tinder in hopes to finding the love of your life because i was literally like that one in 10 million i wasn't even looking for any kind of relationship i had gotten out of a long-term relationship with my ex at that time and i downloaded tinder because i was like oh my gosh i can finally download tinder because my friends would go on it all the time and it kind of looked like a game because it is a game it is such a superficial app because you literally spend like less than a second scrolling through these people based on their looks all the bios are trash anyways and it's like since it is so superficial and it's so just like i feel like you have to be in like kind of like a weird mindset to just be able to go on tinder i usually went on it like midnight or something like that sometimes i would do it in lecture like in class because i was bored because it's like a game to me and i feel like it's like that for a lot of people i kind of come from both ends of the spectrum i've had a great experience on tinder obviously i met my boyfriend who i love very very much we both went on tinder not looking for a relationship but once we started talking to each other we were like maybe I'll make an exception for you kind of thing. Um, but I think everyone's intentions could be different. It's so hard to find someone with the same intentions as you. Okay, so back to what I was saying before. I've had a good experience on Tinder, but let me tell you, I've had my fair share of bad experiences, okay? There's one I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh my gosh, I was like this man was a god and i saw him at a halloween party and i was like oh my god i'm so nervous because we had matched on tinder right so i was like oh he thinks i'm cute like i think his he's cute like maybe he'll want to talk to me i don't know like i i don't know we matched on tinder right and then he i like went up to him and i was like hey like we matched on tinder like it's nice seeing you and he straight up was like really and i was like bro it took everything out of me not to start crying on the spot i was like you dick like why <laughs> at least lie i'm like wow my ego was bruised for a while after that let me tell you so yeah i don't think i answer your question well but that's my answer <laughs> What kind of contraception are you using? In all of my past Girl Talk videos, I was talking about how I have the like birth control implant in my arm right here. But as of two months ago, that baby was out and I haven't replaced it with any other sort of um, birth control that I personally take. I had a great first year, didn't have my period. I, my mood swings, like I didn't have any, like I felt very, very normal. I was 17 at the time though, so I don't really know how that messed with me. And as of recently, I've had my period straight for like four to five months. And I've talked about this in like my last Girl Talk video and I was still continuing my period for all this time. I would be spotting all the time and I don't know what was wrong. My libido, girl, she was non-existent. Like it was, it was a struggle because I was like, girl, oh, I was always, <laughs> I was always horny, you know? And then recently, like, I was like, what, what's happening? Like, it was so weird. The implant was already expiring. Like I would have to have 
like gotten it removed and replaced eventually so i thought this time i would just remove it and not replace it but yeah yeah it's back it's back to normal so we're good in that i do have like periods again but i've only had two and they were like kind of they were normal periods like they lasted for five days overall i feel good we do use condoms every single time um but yeah we just i don't know i just wanted to be natural for a little bit i'm not opposed to ever going back on birth control but i just kind of wanted to test the waters and see how it was yeah i know i know a lot of people don't have the same experience as i do so i'm not telling you to take out your birth control or stop taking it um this is just what i did okay so now i'm gonna get on to the sex questions which i feel like is what a lot of people watch these videos for primarily the first one is is fingering weird for you and the answer is no but okay i don't know what you actually mean by this question i don't know if they mean like if someone's doing it to you and you don't like it or if you do it to yourself and you don't like it for me personally if i'm the one you know i don't particularly love it i just feel like <laughs> it just feels like i'm putting a tampon in and it's just like not a i don't know i don't know but when someone else is doing it like yes i feel like especially if you're going to have intercourse i think she needs to be revved up you know like she can't you can't just your hole's this big okay you can't just jam something in there and it's just gonna hurt and i just i feel like it's kind of necessary am i the only one who hates getting my kitty in i feel like this could be put into two separate things the first being do you not like it because it doesn't feel good and you just don't feel pleasure or your partner just like can't do it i have so many friends of mine that are like i don't like it like it literally feels like if a dog I'm not gonna finish that sentence but you know what i mean like it's just not a good experience it's like sloppy like a lot of people just don't like it or second scenario is it because you're insecure of the way that you look smells or you know like kind of it's very intimate you know like it's just it's just a very intimate kind of thing and are you scared of that overthinking the whole thing you're like oh do i smell like do i taste bad like blah 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 blah, blah then i feel like that's something that you need to work on yourself and talk to your partner about and they can reassure you that you're fine or you know what i mean so i think communication especially is very very key in this something i got a lot of questions about were vagina insecurities and it was so interesting because i got so many questions about this i was shocked i was like omg all these girlies are insecure about their kitty and i mean i'm not saying i'm the most confident about mine i remember i was so insecure about mine mine don't look like you know like super tiny like non-existent kendall jenner got some questions that were like is it normal for your kitty to look dull i don't know what that means another one was like how to deal with hyperpigmentation down there i also don't i don't look at her that often i'm just like hey she's doing what she needs to do yeah i just got so many questions about it so i just wanted to like talk about that here because if you're insecure about her just know that you're not alone porn is fake and people get surgery to make it look perfect and i just feel like it's so childish and immature to bring someone down for having like like a big kitty i feel like us as women have to reclaim back what is ours i i hate that we're so insecure about our vaginas and just the way that they look when men also have equally like not aesthetically attractive <laughs> like things like i think we just all gotta accept that we're all kind of gross it's, i don't under it's just misogyny it's just misogyny someone said like i feel like i'm really behind on sexual experiences and how old were you when you lost your virginity i just want to let you know i completely felt this way too and i was only 17 i think when i lost my virginity and i thought i was the latest bloomer ever okay and that is so far from the truth i feel like from a way too young of age we are exposed to sex and the concept of virginity and that women mean nothing other than you know being a thing for guys to fuck you know and it's just so disgusting and i definitely 
saw my like self-worth in that i was like oh my god like i'm not a woman because i haven't had sex kind of thing like oh my god all of my friends are having sex like guys don't like me like they don't even want to have sex with me it's just i think i definitely blame the media and just gross men for this but something about tiktok that i really enjoy i mean don't get me wrong tiktok does have its moments i would say their cons definitely outweigh their pros but one of their pros is that it definitely lets people know that they're not alone. I recently, I've been seeing a lot of TikToks being like, I'm 22, I'm a virgin, I've never had a boyfriend. I feel like there, it's not something to be behind on, you know, like it's not a race. It's not a race to be like, oh, I, I've done everything. I've done every sexual thing ever. So now I am a most amazing human. It's not we were put on this earth for, I mean, I guess like procreating, but also we have too many humans anyway. So maybe it's a good thing that a lot of people aren't having kids, but you know what I mean? It's not our entire existence. Sex is not. Also, it's really important to note that a lot of people are liars, okay? Are you are you happy with yourself now? Like, you think that you're cool? Okay. It's not that I regret losing it at the age that I was because I think I was really ready and I lost it to someone that I trusted and I knew wouldn't hurt me. I didn't do it for, like, the best reasons, you know? Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm really, 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 really ready because I was ready, but I was like, mm, I'm excited to tell my friends that I lost my virginity so maybe they'll think I'm cool. And the last sexy question I have for today is how did your parents find out you had sex Ooh, my mom's a very outspoken lady she's amazing she is so funny like she has no filter at all she's really really chill too there's not a lot of asian moms that are like her so she's really funny like it's just it's a great time i love my mom so much i think she was like cutting up vegetables or something and she was like have you had sex and i was like uh yeah and she was like oh okay that's it. I thought she was gonna give me a spanking of a lifetime, let me tell you. What do you do if you feel like no one will ever think you're pretty because you're brown? Um, someone asked me that. I'm not brown. <laughs> Evidently. This question made me so sad, I almost started crying. It's just because I relate- related and still kind of get these thoughts sometimes, you know? Like, especially in high school. It was really, really hard for me because like I would be like with my group of friends, right? They were all like pretty white people. When guys would like, when they would walk by us, they would look at us, right? And they would always look at like the girl, like not me. And they were like, oh my God, they just, they looked at me. Like, who do you think they looked at? Blah, blah, blah. And I would always know, always know they weren't looking at me. Why would they look at me when there's this blonde girl with blue eyes? I, I, I saw a lot of TikToks. <laughs> Okay, I'm talking about TikTok way too much in this video, but I feel like it's relatable and I feel like maybe you guys have seen the same ones as me. Like I've seen a lot of TikToks about all these other women of color that feel the exact same way as I did in high school. And it's so sad that this is a universal experience for us. And it's something that white women will never understand. And I don't think I'm the most articulate and you know, whatever person to be speaking about this. And I know a lot of people are probably going to not agree with what I'm saying, but it's just kind of me. I'm just kind of talking here. I'm on my bed. I'm talking to you guys. You guys can click off this video if you don't agree. It's so hard as a woman of color to feel beautiful in a world where we're we're considered not. And it, it kind of comes to this point where white women don't even look like white women because a lot of features that are very present in women of color are being kind of adopted by white women. So like now white people don't look like white people, but it like these features only look good on white people with a beauty standard, you know? It is also, you kind of have to think about it. Like if some person is not gonna find you attractive or like you because of your ethnicity, do you really want to be with them? Do you really want to be associated with them? Another thing that kind of related to uh, the last question was finding out that your close friends are racist. And this is also something that I've experienced too at my high school. Um, I went to high school in Huntington Beach, California. If you know anything about Huntington Beach, California, it is the Florida of the United States. It is like Nazi central. It's so racist. Oh my God. Like thinking back to it, I'm like, 
I'm a strong woman. Like, how did I survive that? I don't know. A lot of people were racist, like to me and a lot of like the other people of color in my class. But this was a time where I wanted to be accepted. Um, I didn't want to be Asian. I wanted to be white so bad. So I would laugh along and be like, haha, like, yeah, I'm Asian. Like, uh, just to be accepted by white people. It was more so the realization that once I graduated high school and I like kind of left that really toxic city and went to college that I was like, damn, everyone I knew is racist, huh? I don't even know how to explain this feeling. It's so awful and like, at least when I was like thinking about it, I was so like, oh my God, like they really didn't see me as anything other than being Asian. Another kind of friend related question is how to not feel sad when your friends don't hype you up. And that's definitely something that I go through still. Um, I don't know. I think it's just because I'm always uh, looking for validation from others and I can't just be happy with myself because I think I'm hot kind of thing. So maybe that's something I need to work on. I mean, it's totally valid to feel sad if your friends aren't hyping you up. Like that's what friends are for. Like they're supposed to tell you that you're the sexiest fucking human being to ever walk on this earth, you know? So yeah, like I don't feel bad about feeling sad. It's definitely something that I wanna work on to be able to just be happy with my own opinion of myself. Someone said, I'm a sister Leo. Uh, what are your thoughts on spirituality and do you practice? So yes, I am a Leo. I know a lot of Leos get a bad rap. We're shit on for a lot of reasons. And I knew this girl freshman year that found out that I was a Leo and then she just didn't like me. Like she did not want to be friends with me. She's like, she's a Leo. Like I don't like her already. What? Like, you <laughs> You don't want to take a chance on me so i was like bro like this shit sucks yeah that kind of made me put a damper on like believing in a ton of astrology stuff i do believe that astrology is real but i don't agree with not being friends with someone or not even talking to someone because of their sun sign i've had like a lot of my friends actually tell me like oh, i'm so glad that i don't have leo in my charts i'm like bitch meet with three leo placements in my chart but i'm like bro like that's mean <laughs> i don't know i think i just maybe i'm just too sensitive but a lot of people have told me that they're happy that they don't have any leo in them um oh actually one second i have this birth date book that um this company like made for me like custom made it says my name on it and my birthday and it just like shows everything about you it's like that one book at like urban outfitters that's like 35 dollars for no reason i also have crystals over there and the last but most important question is frogs and to that i say yes <laughs> Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun talking to you guys. Um, it's been a long six months, but I hope you enjoyed this little sleepover talking chat. Um, but yeah, okay, I love you so much. I'll see you when I see ya. Bye.